I'm gonna have to turn off the sound on the there. Oh, I've muted. Yes. Yeah, hello people. Hi everyone. We have a mat from the mat channel. Yes, I hear myself. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, so, would you would you like to introduce yourself? Where are you from? Uh, how did you get in the topic? What are your interests right now? So, what is? I think you had a pretty uh, good start with your videos uh, because they had some style, and and I think they are like you know really good uh, artist uh, style. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, my channel's name is Mud. <laughs> I mean, I guess I, I was very inspired by your work, especially the Mud Puzzle uh, playlist. And um, so you were one of my biggest inspirations. And Martin did a great job as well with all his um, books. Um, that uh, so then I hello everyone hi from hi there hi Sweden anyway so um, I just fell in love and especially first I had also seen that other Russian guy who did the uh, N there are no trees on planet Earth video uh, it also had those uh, some elements of the flood and. It was not until this uh, this spring or not, last year um, that I well there was some something that had happened in my life and I was really upset and uh, I thought I want to do something creative uh, so then I just took my car and I went driving looking for you know really old ruins and places that are not called. Well, that the things we we look at now. So anyway, so that's kind of how it started. Yes. Okay. So you you uh, should you let us uh, where you're from so we can oh, understand. Yeah. Yes, I'm Swedish. Swedish, right? Uh, what what city? Maybe Stockholm. I have lived many years in Stockholm, but also. Uh, outside in the countryside called Surmland. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, an area very beautiful, very lush and green. Um, climate is has the four seasons. We don't have those tough winters mm -hmm. as, uh, as you have in Moscow. <laughs> pre 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 pretty mild climate, right? So it's like close yeah. to the sea, high humidity. Yeah. Okay, so what type of uh, um, structures do you have? Uh, are they looking antique style or are they like, you know, classical or maybe uh, Hansa uh, type of style? What do you have in Stockholm? I've never been there. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not so good with the name dropping, <laughs> but maybe someone in the chat can tell us. Well, well, I mean, I know the buildings look like they have a lot of towers uh, on yes. the top and or sharp roofs and all this stuff like yes, like yes. this. So, but I've never been there. So I wonder if it has also the antique style like they had in. in no, not so in, much. You know, no, not so much. Not so much. Um, but I have discovered more uh, this year, and also um, other cities that I didn't really see before the details that are antique. I was walking around uh, in uh, Stockholm, the high end of Stockholm, where they have many old buildings and huge doors. So I do have some footage from that, but it's almost as if I have too much footage now to edit. So it's been piling up. And, and also the weather hasn't always been so good. I mean, it's been snowing, it's been very cloudy, so the photos aren't as nice as I wanted them, if, as if it, 
had been sunny. So. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, but uh, a lot of red brick buildings, right? There, yes, so. lots of lots of Tatarian. Uh, uh, I noticed so many more that I didn't even think of before uh, when I before I woke up to them to this topic. <laughs> okay, um, in our uh, previous uh, chat, uh, you you told me that you know some information on Starforts and uh, would like to present maybe some of it if you if you wish. Well, I, I, I don't have uh, I don't have the skills of sharing yet. So uh, uh, I, I sharing is very, it's pretty much easy. It's like a little green screen. If you uh, move your mouse on the screen of the Hangouts chat, you you well, see, I, the, I see the the green screen. So you press it a couple of times. Press yes, yes, yes. Share, 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 and you eventually will t will tell you if we see anything. Okay, I better close down some windows then. <laughs> yeah, close your personal files and all this stuff. <laughs> of course. Wait. Mm hmm. Okay. I. 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 <laughs> I um. I can't hear you now. No, because I'm silent. Okay, okay. I, I just saw it was a delay. I saw your mouth moving and it was all quiet. So, but uh, I also, I, I saw that you and uh, and Lopez, you were doing something on the Star Forts. Was it yesterday? We, we were starting the talk because the next uh, Connecting the Dots, uh, the Richard Mona film is was going to be about the Star Forts. So, I was like entering the topic with this previous information mm. so the people could understand my position and um, I'm getting ready for that also and uh, I, I'm gonna have a, a, a part of my film also about the Star Forts because Star Forts in my opinion related to mining mm. and were powered by the gas stations so Perhaps because most of the cities like Paris were designed for the gas uh, illumination. So infrastructure was already there in the uh, late 19th century. Yeah. They used it. Yes, I lived in Paris uh, for a while, many years ago, and I didn't know anything about this then. But now when I think of it, you know, these... Uh, how how some uh, outside of many palaces and these huge monumental buildings, all these patterns that you can see, for instance, in uh, um, DC, DC, yeah, and and uh, other where politicians rule, but th there's something about the patterns and all the stone work that has been laid on the ground with. Almost as if they have had, a, they've been landing on it or something for different, I don't know. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. So, so could you screen share so what will you try to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't preparing to share anything like that. So. Uh, uh, but, um, so you do you have anything you want to want to show? Yeah, I, I just wanted to show your uh, video that yes. I I'd like to show the people, and maybe we we could pause it a little bit and uh, maybe Please discuss do what what what, do, what what do you think of that or oh, of I'd this like picture? That. Yeah, let's try to do that. Um, so right now you see my screen, yeah. which is you know eternal. So this is the screen share button here. Can yeah, you see it? I see that. So, okay. Now I, you just, you know, go whatever uh, link you want. So this is the video. It's called Physics Secretame. I don't know if you can hear the sound. Can you hear the sound? No. No, it haven't started. Yes, sound is started, but you can hear it. But that's okay because it's just music. Um, so well, I'm so glad you brought up that. 
Yeah, th this is uh, just, you know, uh, a bunch of uh, this uh, series you have, like yeah, physics accredited. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, so most of these uh, pictures are unique and where you got them, because I never seen anything like this. It was uh, a stream Martin ha held uh, a vlog and uh, he posted some of the links to this. He said, oh, I'd, I've I found many of these, so go and research them. So then I, I managed to find all of them that were in this series. So it's all from the Bible. And it, I was blown away. Just the details, as you can see, uh, there, there's so much symbolism just in the frames. It's almost as if I could do another series just on the frames. So. I mean, is it the perspective if all those guys are bigger than these guys here? Uh. Yeah, some, sometimes uh, uh, there are not so many uh, giants, but that one could be that there are different sizes. But you can see in the architecture and uh, let's see. Yeah, look at this man. He is like, also they show the weather, uh, and and uh, they have a uh, this guy in the dress. Uh, he, he looks like a priest. priest. He looks yes, like a priest. But he has like women's clothes, and he has. There's another image of him with the the ball, the the bull. He is much more dressed like a woman than any other mm. man, and there's a real funny image with him with a ball i think in, in very another, strange very strange yeah hi richard thank you i'm sorry I'm hey richard sure. look look up look out for the chat <laughs> <laughs> and you you think this is a fascist right here yeah could and that, if you go back for a few seconds, uh, also, uh, I don't know if it's Moses, but he has some kind of devil horn lights in his head. You can you can go back yourselves. But here are the fascists, right? Uh, and, and I see over and over again that not only Moses, but you see here, he has those mm -hmm. lights in his head. It's really strange. And I've, there are many images like that. And here are the fascists. Yeah, this is not light. This is like so-called horns. We see That's those so horns yeah, in, light, on, on light. most of the pictures that he was represented. In some yes. sculptures, we even see those horns on his head. Yeah, light horns. Uh, somebody calls them uh, the just the ho horns, like the horns from, you know, whatever but also animal. Too on the other sorry if i'm interrupting you but on the left side of this image there's so much just in this photo or no in this drawing uh they, there's this huge pandora box like um i box. mean uh, pandora box how does it relate to, uh, how, how was it rela related to the biblical uh topic uh, pandora, just... Pan pandora box is you know a pagan box which is, you know, completely should be erased from the Christianity and all this stuff it, because it, it should. But you still see these uh, either the ones most people think it's a box or it's a box, but it can oh. also be uh, more more like a, uh, a sarcophag, uh, exactly, uh, or something you put plants in with a lid. Or maybe, maybe sarcophag is, in nowadays we call sarcophags also the places where they contain something, like in a nuclear waste also is a sarcophag, and uh, maybe some uh, biological weapons, maybe that's why if you open the Pandora box, you, you're like dead. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and this actually looks to me like uh, they were showed the place where they could, they could find some chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. If you literally uh, talk mm -hmm. about the Pandora box here. Yes, yes. That was uh, just a parenthesis, but um, 
there was I, I could have done even longer breakdowns, but my internet and my computer cannot take too much information, so I limited it. Here, here is um, yeah. Very interesting picture. And also that that uh, again for those the metal and also uh, um, horns or whatever this mm -hmm. is. Here, here there, are, there are those little. And the snakes everywhere, as yeah. you can see. This snake looks like a symbol of medicine. Yes. Or current symbol of drugs and all this stuff. And also, you see, all these men are lay laying down, and mm -hmm. they're they're getting attacked. But he seems to be controlling. So it's Moses and his serpents. Mm -hmm. I think it's Moses. It's like he's erasing uh, all the uh, parents uh, from his tribe, so he can uh, guard the rest and the rest of teenagers and kids and the women, right? So yeah, he is like killing all the uh, all the men here. Probably, probably. And the huge serpent here. So, uh, in Russian, we have um, uh, other name of uh, the snake, which is God. Yeah, you see the snake on the top. So, God in uh, most of the languages is uh, similar to God, right? So, uh, that's why. Uh, interesting. It's very interesting, in fact. And I've been talking about it a bunch of times that I all those languages, yeah. all those languages are uh, decoding each other, in fact. Strange picture also. Yeah, very strange. And here's the angel is a bit bigger than uh, the, the man, but you don't see so many of those differences. And here the angel is trying to stop him beating up the... Or if it's a donkey or mm -hmm. a horse. You see the details. There's some beautiful details. And you have the skull and bones uh, symbolism in almost all the frames. This is a very interesting animal. I'm so glad you, you picked this uh, vid vid video. Yeah, never seen anything like this. And it looks so sad, as if it's extinct. It's the last one on, on Earth, perhaps. And you see also the bones on the sides. And mm -hmm. all often, on if you see animals, there are coins, as if they had a price, or they were supposed to be extinct or something. And and often, they are so beautiful but scary. Almost these frames. It, and also, it all, almost looks like it has uh, a sweater, that animal. Probably. Hmm. Unicorn. It looks like a deer. Yeah. So it, Here is the unicorns. Uh, after you look okay. at this picture, this you, you, I think unicorns are no problem for everybody because this is just a, just a looking like a deer. Mm. But it has straight horns, one horn. No, mm, just like that animal we saw before, also mm. it has one horn. One horned. So guys, you can all check the channel. As you can see, the this is part number four, uh, right? Yeah, so there's a couple before and a couple after it. Yeah, there's eight, and eight. there's also one bonus, and it's the herbarium with uh, beautiful just plants, and that that one we can take a look at as well, if you want to. The herbarium, they're all in the same playlist. And you see, they were planning something, <laughs> planning to change the world. 
or moving in after some event. You see all these plans mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. drawings and sketches and reading. Yeah, in fact, that's what I was thinking when I was looking at the, these pictures. The, the Masonic Who draw people? them? Who yeah. draw them? Who had right. the instruments to draw so digitalized pictures? Uh, Some look like see. photos. It's see? just a way to maybe to discredit this uh, this information. You know, mm -hmm. maybe some some fantasies of uh, some here's the giant pro pro, pro masonic uh, painter who draw this album to hmm. for mockery. You know, to um, to influence the uh, paradigm. You know mm -hmm. how how the people could imagine or visualize this or that event. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, brainwashing the population. When you, you when you show them uh, this type of images, yeah. and if your images consist of uh, false information, in fact, or imaginary information which is not real, hmm. what you think it. So you just use this information to influence the hmm. thinking. Yeah. most the frames are they have put down more work often on the frames and they're more uh, finely done or, or how, how would I put it crafted <laughs> because they almost yeah. look crafted uh, even yeah, if it's also yeah, print yeah, yeah. so the details are finer on the frames than they are in the it's images it's a craftsmanship, so that's why it's crafted. Yes, uh, uh, copper print or whatever technique this was. It must have been very, very advanced. And how they used uh, some kind of lens so they could easily look at those strange things. What are those? Th those like lumpy hearts. Oh, yes. Engraving. Yes, thanks. I mean, This is the gardening, I think, something yeah. like this. So it's like they show in. And also, what, what are they showing? They're showing that the population was gardening and uh, providing its food. So yeah. it's like no problem for them, you know. So no hunger and yeah. pretty. As you can see, this is uh, symbolizing the. Uh, that they had a lot of fruits and all this uh, nuts here and whatever vegetables here. So they had a bunch of those, a bunch of this. Look at this cans of maybe honey or even wine or whatever. So this symbolizes that they could be, you know, providing themselves uh, with the food and not even bothering, maybe even selling it. Yeah. Yeah, they're butching. It's like, you know, I don't know if it's a joke or uh, a so man. No. Like uh, they say uh, that people were hunting yeah. and fishing each and every day and that man came back home and, you know, were uh, eating what they got, what they... Uh, earned yeah. during the day so and they were you know all natural they must have and, had a very good time then it must have been very peaceful time and also that they had had, had rifles in these drawings so the, that they had rifles for so long so I mean, long if 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 they had rifles, that could be at least a fifteenth, sixteenth century. Yeah, as it looks at, at the yeah, pictures. Yeah. So we don't see much uh, Christian 
symbolism, right? No churches, no. nothing no. like this. Only some uh, ancient uh, and biblical, biblical. So it's like pre-Christian, uh, before Christian era, because yeah. it's like Old Testament things here. So it's like kind of proves what Famenka and Nasovsky said that uh, probably the Old Testament uh, was occurring in uh, in the era after the Christ. And the New Testament uh, occasions were before the Old Testament. Yeah. So, and uh, this this could be also condensed with this uh, mud flood and reset theory. So, uh, if we could imagine that the Noah flood was uh, not what we know, but what we can see and observe right, right now. See the huge uh, uh, valve, how high it is, sorry. Yeah, of course. So if uh, the Noah flood could be what we just, you know, symbolism as what we see on those pictures, because mm -hmm. they, they influenced the information and they got you uh, literally the book where you can refer to and find those writings in those Bibles and uh, chapters there. And you can read, yes, okay, Moses was there, Moses did this, Moses did that, Noah did this, Noah did that, so this was the flood and all this stuff. So you can find the reference in this book. And they say that this was like back, 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 back then, before the Christ. Mm. How do you know that? You can and prove it. You can. So you have to believe those guys. And those guys were also fooled. Because they were told the same thing when they were young and when, when they were, you know, teaching, learning this stuff. So it's like merry-go-round situation because uh, those who were taught are teaching the next generation. And this is how the memory is erased. Once you teach the first one, this uh, misleading inf informer will teach the rest. And so they will believe because they cannot prove or disprove this information. So it's like... Uh, the question of belief as a religion is a belief. Yeah, yeah. You know, does this look like a, uh, you know, a falcon or something? First, I thought I thought this was a crow, <laughs> but I don't know. It's a woman printing. I can't hear you right now. I'm just, you know, watching. <laughs> yeah, uh, as you can see, it's not always uh, as it should be. So sometimes, yeah, if 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 I if you can't hear me or if I'm not replying, that's because of my internet. Okay, yeah. guys. I think we should like stop and um, on the link, the description to this um, chat, you can f always find the link to the mod channel and uh, you can search it. Uh, well, if you print uh, print the mod in the, in the search, you can find it also. So uh, what are you, what are your next steps? What are you going to do like this year? What, what are you going to hit on? <laughs> oh, oh, I I have just been, there's the skull and bones. Um, I've been, um, well, I've been traveling a bit and uh, I, I still have some old books I'm going through. For instance, I'm looking into these, um, I've, I've noticed there are many sculptures that are holding up buildings as if, it's something psychological that hu the humankind, that it's a burden to live, it's a burden to work, you know, mm -hmm. all, the, all these sculptures. So I'm looking a bit into that. I don't know if I'm gonna do something on that specifically, but I've, it's, I've noticed it a lot when I've been walking around in Stockholm last time and also on other trips. 
do you have any underground tours in Stockholm when you have like underground old uh, brick ceilings with arches, no. all this stuff? No, but there in the old town of Stockholm, there's a lot of old, uh, so they call kind of Viking uh, uh, cellars where people go and eat uh, tourist food. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, so there's a lot of cellars and people think it's so um, almost like romantics to go down there. But it's so crazy that they have brick under, under, you know, underneath. Uh, it's not a very good uh, thing to build with. So. Okay, yeah. uh, what do you know about the Saint Petersburg, and what do you know about the Sweden versus Russia war in uh, 18th century? Have you heard something about it? Oh yeah, uh, I think. Uh, Oh, you mean the one in the Savar or the uh, the war? I think uh, it's a psyop because on the Swedish side, uh, I mean, I don't know the whole bit, but on the Swedish side, when the north of Sweden, they don't have any proof. They haven't found any bullets, any clothes, anything. It's like what we see right now is like uh, Peter, uh, Peter the First or Peter the Great, yeah. the guy who was like supposed to found this Saint Petersburg yeah. uh, town. He was actually at that period he was fighting Sweden. He was fighting against the Carl or maybe Carl the Great, uh, yeah. one of your famous one of your famous uh, monarchs. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, they were fighting on the sea, they were fighting uh, close to the Finland, yeah. and they were fighting in Ukraine. So in Ukraine, it was the final fight, and uh, after that fight, uh, Karl was beaten, and he was like retreating, and maybe, I don't know, I don't even remember what happened to him, but something, something uh, happened, and he like signed the defeat and gave uh, a bunch of land to russia including uh, parts of finland parts of uh, estonia and all this stuff so it's like a bunch of land and uh, he like uh, they like say that peter was building st petersburg at the same time and uh, Weberg was under the swedish control Weberg is like uh, 100 Less than hundred kilometers from uh, from Saint Petersburg, so it's yeah. like a couple of a uh, couple of hours of ride on horses. So I can't even imagine how you can build a city, a capital of your country, um, when you have a war with the enemy in a hundred in a couple of hours of ride. And you yeah. don't even win the war at that time when you start your building. So it's like, and they say uh, the city was built on the on the swamps. So it's like uh, totally hard to do that. Well, we can see what you s s try to screen share right now. Yeah, I am trying. To. Did you see anything yet? No? Yes, right now. Okay. So it's like interesting situation because Peter. Uh, the great is a strange subject and, and i'm gonna try to uh finish my crow crow and ray bradbury with him because he was the first one of the first romanovs and uh, very interesting thing about him that he was not supposed to be a, an emperor or king he was uh, like uh, third or even fourth in the line uh to the crown so he was like and all the kids were de dead who were in front of him, all, all his brothers, only he survived. And uh, he was brought to Holland for a couple of years, maybe even five to six years. And then he returned and he couldn't even speak Russian when he returned. So he even, even uh, sent his wife in the monastery and never yeah. even met her after his return. He uh, punished and prosecuted all his friends that he knew before he went to Holland. And then this guy 
was supposed to have a war with Sweden. So this is a very strange situation. So I'd like, if you have any time on that, uh, to find some Swedish sources on that war, yeah. what was it about? And uh, because we have some crazy uh, information, like uh, that, that Carl King, after his death, uh, he even had a, a Latin spelled Russian uh, burial speech. Yes. I don't know why. So perhaps maybe... if you have some specific, uh, some, some, uh, some names or some towns or something specific, you can email me so uh, we could see if we can brainstorm a bit. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm not okay. A, super good with history, but I will give it a shot. I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, because you can, you know, I, I know you have a bunch of libraries and all this stuff in Stockholm, so. You can might as, well, might as well visit some and you know check for some yeah I do. Actual, I actual, I do. actual books from 18th century I, I bet they have some I don't live there right now but uh, I do visit sometimes and and they have this library the Royal Library of Stockholm which has tunnels under the chambers so I yeah. also have a, a, a a few uh, a video that I might be doing in the future on that, but uh, it's, in fact, uh, most of the museums that are located right now in the nineteenth, eighteenth century buildings have those underground floors. That's yes. how, and they say it's just you know we have them for a basement to you know keep our books and all those uh, antiquities that we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at the word antiquities, antique, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you wanted to show us something. Well, I you didn't can... really know how, how that works, but if you want to go to uh, the playlist, it, maybe it's easier for you. You seem to know how to move it around. If you go to the Herbarium, in the playlist of the uh, Physique Sacré, you have the mm -hmm. uh, Herbarium video. Let's see. Herbarium, yes. Also, you know, Captain Kirk has also been so, he's a wonderful, he, he also finds the greatest books. So. Controllers reset notes. Yeah, well, that's just what I called it. And also the handwriting is so beautiful. Is this, no, this is, is this the herbarium? Yeah, I mean, Noah's Ark, it looks completely what we are talking about. Yeah, you can reset both. Here, first, first the drawings or the 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 prints. They're so beautiful, but you're gonna see a, a few interesting things here soon. So, you're thinking, oh, these are fossils or they're uh, plants, but there's more. See, so, is this the one? I think it is. There. The, you have that, um, what do you call it? The Lichtenberg pattern. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then here, they, they, they organize them as a, a pyramid, these plants, and they sort them as a geom geometrical, geom geometric, ge how to say, geometrical Ge uh, kind yeah. of style, but they're just plants. And here is also the Lichtenberg patterns. Yes, on the right here. Yeah. I think this was very interesting. And also uh, this one, this stone or mushroom or what it is. And then there's a little house there. Why is that symbol there? <laughs> so strange. It's like, it's like the structure of the crystal they show in as uh, the uh, crystal uh, structure like yeah. they can't uh, magnify it here so they like show how it looks mm. it's like mm. and then that pyramid like thing what is that you see I that think number they, seven. they like, rolled it in the, in the cone 
but it's still so strange. Why would they use these uh, shapes and symbols? Uh, it's very interesting. And uh, I just made a close up because this is more handwritten. And the details are so beautiful. In fact, how, how do you know it's handwritten? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably not. This, this could be photography. And those, look at that number four with those crystals or... Yeah, cells. also this picture. Mm. Hexagon. Yeah. And here, this must be a photo. And also, what are these little, like, germs or something? See that? Why would they even bother doing that? They're not scribbles. They're, 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 it's something. Hmm. Maybe they mean that uh, they have like... Nerves? Maybe something like, you know, veins or whatever. Mm -hmm. Channels. Something nerves. for water or... or... Could be. This is a church. Mm -hmm. A friend sent me some images. I can't see this in the. Uh, I can't see this in the shot. Oh. Number oh, no, I can see it now. I refreshed. It was still playing the former. Oh, wait, I think it's a number of a beast. Oh, whoa. C33. Mm -hmm. And then 33. Three, and then 33 three on the door. So it's triple six. So if you play again. Ah, okay. They're very sneaky. <laughs> Put that. So I think that's a uh, redesigned door. Maybe they changed it. This is so strange. Like uh, they're ghosts or uh, some kind of. This is a plant, but it's also a strange man that looks funny. So mm -hmm. it's part of this plant or crystal or fossil. And this strange thing with a hat also is some kind of entity or some kind of ghost or spirit. Yeah, like the boogeyman. Something yeah, like. it's, so, it's almost cute. But that Roman guy does not look so cute with one breast and those, those strange arm. Thank you. Very Thank good you. video. <laughs> Let's you. see what we have in the chat, guys. Um, Any questions? I'm really glad we're looking at these because I put down so much work. I also, uh, it, it was uh, quite ex exhausting to do the work, to say the least, for it, with these videos. Like Truth Pepin, Truth Preppin says, also great floods and disasters of early 90. Hundreds, it's like 1900s, which is uh, the 20th century, in fact. Yeah. Uh, shows and talk about the flood that covered most of Indiana and Ohio. Yeah. You know, what is the reasons of those floods? Just, you know, what are sciences uh, trying to explain? Yeah. How do they explain it? I think they cannot explain it because uh, the easiest explanation for this is just that people didn't care about the rivers after the mud flood so mud flood uh, ruined all the river systems with these mud layers so the water at at each and every flood will be you know flowing off shore and you know flood in the areas which mm -hmm. are valleys and nearby areas so so in, in fact we see the series of those floods until 60s and 70s of uh, 20th century so yeah. it's like each and every year we had a flood here in Russia in most of these uh, country uh, regions. So 
It's just because the people didn't care about the rivers, they didn't clean, they didn't dredge the rivers. So it's like you have to maintain your, uh, you know, river system because it's transportation. It's, uh, you know, it's a different, uh, different economic questions. Yeah. So you have to do it. If you don't have money, if you don't have specialists, if you don't have techniques, if you don't have the technology to maintain your rivers, you will have floods each and everywhere. That's what really explains it. For the end of 19th century and at the beginning of 20th century we have huge floods and people mm. uh, sending me photos where uh, most of these uh, areas are flooded and you know heavily flooded so uh subscribe to my instagram follow me on instagram i have all those pictures there yeah. and so if you have an instagram account guys just find me there and uh if you don't you can find me just go to community link on the YouTube channel, uh, like here, and find the post where I show my Instagram account, like somewhere here. Yes, here. So I, I like search for the best pictures uh, each and every day and post them here and show very interesting footage like cleaning of the channels, which was, you know, totally flooded by mud in Venus. And... Oh, that's an amazing photo. In fact, uh, there's a bunch of those pictures, and Martin Lidke also is a great source because he, he is, is like oh. posting, uh, doing a huge job. Like, where you else you can find this picture? Jonestown, Pennsylvania, 1889, approximately. So yeah. very interesting picture. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us today. I think uh, uh, we should do have... this again someday. Yeah, we should do it again, and we sure will. Subscribe to my channel. You you can find link in, into the description, and uh, watch the videos because a bunch of them are worth watching. In fact, as you can see today, as you as you have seen today, the very interesting footage. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, joining us today. I'm so glad we could do this tonight. I really was hoping for that. So, yeah, you don't know how sleepy I am. You know, oh. I, I I had like three uh, th three shows or maybe four shows each yeah. day at the same period of time, and then like I cannot even. So you need a break now. Yeah, I need to go to sleep today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks, guys, for watching. See Thank you later. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.